I'm gonna sing a song for you. <clears throat> Tell you all the time. Heaven is a place on earth with you. Tell me all the things you wanna do. I heard that you like the bad girls, honey. Is that true? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Que lo que hay, mi gente. Welcome back to Two Drinks and a Ting. I'm your Ting Natalia. And I'm Eric. And this is my Bethel. What is a Ting without her two drinks? Today's... <laughs> I always fuck it up. Um, today's drink... Is that going to be in a video? Huh? Is that going to be in a video? I can. <laughs> okay. I'm the director. I can do what I want. But um, so yeah, what is a Ting without her two drinks? And I brought it back, but this time I enhanced it. It's a piña colada, Don Q, for the Puerto Ricans out there who know what the fuck I'm talking about. And she thick. Real thick. Mm. Cheers. Clank. So before we begin with the episode, I know this bitch. All the way back to high school. We met in science class. Shout out to Miss Lewis. Ew. <laughs> I don't know the story, in all honesty. I met him through an ex-friend, and we just stood friends together. So what's the official so, story? I remember. So I was sitting in front of you, Gabby. Yeah. And then- Cassandra was near us. Yes, Cassandra was near us. So, you know, me being shy, always, you know, come to class, do, 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 sit down, did my thing. And then, you know, you guys were in the back, you know, cracking up, laughing, making jokes, whatever. And I'd be like- <laughs> <laughs> you know, listening in, but you know, kind of like giggling to myself. He's and then, like, you know, I think Gabby like noticed I was like laughing or whatever. And I was like, You guys are funny. And then, you know, she was just like, Oh, okay, you think we're funny? Okay, come on and hang out with us. And then, like, um, it was like some group project or a activity. And then, you know, uh, Gabby had invited me in. And then we just, ever since then, it was just kind of like next class day. Hey. <laughs> How y'all doing? Yes. What's up? Chemistry, which was the class we were in, was <laughs> a trip. I remember <laughs> we had a, um, our class project. Oh it was my like, god! <laughs> each um, project, it was a different topic, but it had to do about innovative way to teach a science class with the periodic table, which was our um, topic. Bitch, I did a soap opera. So I took the names from the periodic table and I made a whole entire show about about it and we filmed it on school campus <laughs> it is number 103 on the periodic table Laurentium. yeah i named the guy Laurentium and kryptonia 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 was a female she was the ex yeah we don't but, know the names but the main fact is um kryptonia was a negative proton or something like that oh. okay we don't know they were opposite they were the same charges and in this instance i was using the idea of opposites attract so the person who was his perfect fit i don't remember what the name was but she was a, a plus see we don't know shit about chemistry okay. so it was me you it was cassandra, cassandra and then just no, us and josh lewis lewis Lewis. There was a Lewis guy there. Lewis? Who's Lewis? So, okay, for the audio listeners, it's four to a row. Eric was the second person. I was the third. And Lewis was the fourth person in that row. And then on my left-hand side, the second was Cassandra. The third was Gabby. And then the fourth was Josh. So it was the six of us occupying that little cubicle. And the people cubicle. <laughs> without a cubicle girl in that little the rec- row. The rectangular. In the rectangular. I think your name was Amanda. He played the female Amanda. attraction to exactly problematic person to what's his name? Laurentium. Yeah. Lewis Lewis, Lewis was Laurentium. You were Amanda. I was Kryptonia. And then um Cassandra was somebody guess, else. Somebody. <laughs> And then um, I just remember, like, we stayed after school, like, recording it on my little rinky-dink iPod. And then Cassandra (laughs) couldn't stay, so his friend stepped in, and he edited it. He edited it. Amanda after... Oh, no. um, Cassandra after surgery. Yes. (laughs) This video made no sense, but you know what? It was giving. 
we had like what a day or two left. <laughs> like it was like we procrastinated till like the last minute. Yes, the last minute. It was so. Let's. Long story short, we got a D, but Mm -hmm. we were the best out of the class. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. Um, And then- Everybody else had like a Jeopardy style game. It was real stupid. We were the only ones who thought outside the box and it was so messy. There was this girl named Chelsea in our class who stayed after class and this girl had had a cameo. She was, I was like, oh girl, Chelsea, what you doing here? She was like, I'm here because my stupid teammates didn't stay after. So I'm just sitting here twiddling my fingers. Mind you, this place- in front of the whole entire class. <laughs> yeah. So literally, you can hear gasping from her team members, from the other kids. The teacher. Bitch, we were Jerry Springer in like our fucking high school. Mm. It was funny. And <laughs> and our teacher knew we weren't passing. She looked, she was like, that was cute. She, she yeah, she was like, it was entertaining, but mm. I didn't learn anything. I was like, what? Are you serious? Hello, we just out here loving people, but apparently she didn't get it. So, but you know we're... what? Still love you, Miss Lewis. Peace. But no, that's how we solidified it. And then we met each other in college, and that was that. So, today we got diversity going on. We got a thread. We got an Am I the Asshole? And if I'm feeling lucky, I'm going to put a little, you know, game into it. We'll figure out, we'll see what happens. Have you seen Super Mario Brothers? The new one? Yes. Okay. Yes, I did, but it was real janky, real dinky. I liked it. No, no, like how I saw it. I didn't go to the movie. Oh, you got third party bullshit. Uh, No, even worse. (laughs) So I'm just like on Twitter, right? And then (laughs) here comes like this one person just like, you know what? Fuck it. Here's the entire Super Mario movie. And I don't know where they got the movie, but it was like in HD. It was like good quality, quality. And I watched the entire movie on Twitter. Bitch. Two posts. It was the first one, and that one was like an hour. And then the second post was about like 30 minutes. And honestly, I enjoyed it. I liked it. I, I'm i not going to lie. Like I wasn't a big video game person as a kid. So I know of Mario, Donkey Kong, of course, you know of them. But in terms of like knowing the game structure i don't know shit about the game so i was just there living for the graphics there's a lot of like um you know homages to like the video games yeah a a lot of nostalgia like a lot of people like um it's been out for a few so this ain't gonna be no spoilers but if you don't haven't watched it you don't want spoilers skip but a lot of people were having um the nostalgic time where they were doing the mario kart and they were just like dumping these turtles and they were like hitting you mm-hmm. to cause you to cause a scene and shit. Yeah. A lot of people were just like smiling. And then when Donkey Kong came out and they were like, DK, DK, yeah. I don't know what the fuck was going on. So then at the end, cause my friend told me not to talk during the movie. I was like, well, fuck, I got questions. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, save him to the last. So I was like, is that his theme song? He was like, whose theme song? Donkey Kong. No, that's just brand new shit. I was like, oh, he's real cute though. Jack Black, fucking hilarious. Yeah, he did a really good job as Bowser. Oh my God, him singing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Peaches, 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 peaches. I love you. (laughs) It was a good movie. I was, I really wasn't expecting it to be so good because I don't like, I don't, Chris Pratt's not my favorite. So when I heard he was Mario, I was like, Ew, I thought Mario yeah. was Italian. What the and fuck? And then like the trailers did not do it any justice. Mm-mm. I think the first trailer they dropped, it was like, all you hear is just like, oh, that's Chris Pratt. And you hear him do the hee 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 or like Whoa. whatever Mario says. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, it's but like, in the movie, they do explain like why they don't add the accent. Why they're or, not, they're Italian descent, but they're not real Italians, but yeah. they play to their strengths of having that accent. So I was like, okay, that makes sense. Because if Chris Pratt was going to go through this whole entire thing with a fake fucking Italian accent, bullshit. He's from Brooklyn. Is he? (laughs) In the, um, in the, it's either Brooklyn or Queens. Oh, no, no, no. (laughs) I thought you meant like in real life. I was like, what? Oh, no, no. I don't know Chris Pratt's life, but in the 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 movie, movie, he's from, Mario is from Brooklyn. And I asked my friend this. I was like, it says Mario Brothers. Mm-hmm. So is Mario Mario Mario? What do you mean? Like his last name is Mario. So Mario's first name is Mario. Mm-hmm. Mario Brothers is assuming that Luigi's oh. last name is Mario. Mario mm-hmm. Mario. Maybe. The internet know. says it's true. And look, I and did you know 
there was a live adaption of the Mario yes. Brothers yes. back a day. Yes. It's terrible. Oh, it's hilarious. So the Super Mario Brothers live adaption with John Ligamowski. I'm so sorry if I'm butchering your name. Ligamowski. Ligazamo. Oh, shit. Ligazamo. <laughs> I'm so sorry. So John Ligazamo, he played Luigi. And this is real life Brooklyn, nine, early 90s. Because it came out in 1993. It's like grungy type of feels. It's them making Bowser a human. I think they have Toad in the movie, if I remember correctly. But it's just weird. The movie's weird. It goes... It goes left real quick. <laughs> you know, it's a trap. They were they were trying shit out, but I was just shocked. I was like, they did a live adaption back a day. Never heard of it, but it's just whenever they do like video games live adaptations, it's just terrible. Well, because video games is meant for fantasy, so it's like it's not going to translate well. I mean, yeah, but like um, The Last of Us, pretty spot on. There's like some things they changed. But it is, like, spot on. Like, there's moments in the show that I'm like, that's from the video game. That's exactly from the video game. Exactly. So, like, I'm just like, how is is this? It's like, it's so in-depth. It goes beyond the normal storyline of a video game that I've ever seen. So, I'm just like, this is an in-depth fucking video game. God damn. Like, how is the movement and stuff? But Last of Us, great show. Who, the last episode, when you finally figure out... He really is that motherfucking dude, Joel, and he just start spraying every fucking body. Oh, in the video game, it's a lot longer. <gasps> <laughs> like that's the end sequence of the game. It's it's a Bitch. it's longer. And the way he just like I don't know, we're just fucking shot Tess in the fucking face and was like, bye, bitch. No, not no, Tess. not Tess. What's his name? What's her name? Marlene. Marlene. When he's just <gasps> yeah, he does it in the video game. Crazy. Ooh. Yeah, Last of Us is great. Tess though. Oh, yeah. She did not deserve to die, but she got bit. It is what it is. Uh, the third episode. The two guys. Yeah. That was a cute that, story. It's, it's different in the video game. I heard that that's not in the video game. Yeah. When I was watching it, I was like thinking in my head, I'm like, what the fuck does it have to do with the video game? Like, it makes no sense. But then I kind of liked how they try to tie it in with Tess and Joel seeing them in the mist and having that communication and building that connection to survive. But then I'm just thinking in my head, ain't no fucking way y'all asses out here surviving 10 plus fucking years. Where are you getting the meat at? I thought animals were out here also getting infected and shit like that. Mm -hmm. What are you eating? Um, suspend disbelief. We'll do it. And, (gasps) bitch, the episode with the cult leader. Oh, the cannibals. Yes. Yeah, girl. That part of the game is also (gasps) longer than what they showed in the Oh my God. Ellie went off. Oh, girl. (laughs) It's more suspenseful in the video game. (laughs) Just one thing I wish they did was they kind of extended like season one to be, they should have done two seasons for the first video game. Because in the next um, season, it's going to be see- season two and three mm-hmm. for the second game. How many games are there? There's two. Two? So they're doing like season two and three. It's going to be the second game. So like part A, part B? Basically. Okay, okay. Oh my God. Yeah, like I have nothing to say about the game because I never played it. But when I keep on hearing about people talk about how identical and how good they stuck to it, I'm just like thinking in my head, like, how is this a fucking video game? Because mm-hmm. It's just so damn good. And I'm just like, (gasps) and what I like to watch on HBO are the inside of the episodes. And I really like how they incorporated the original voicing characters of the video game in the show. Tess is not Tess. I keep on saying Tess. Ellie's mother is the original Ellie. Um, One of the cult leaders, the cannibal, he's the original Joel and Marlene is Marlene. Mm -hmm. I just think that's, I love it. Full circle. And then I think the cr- video creator is the creator of the show as well. Or yeah. partnered. I, I think, think they're they, writers. They partnered. Yeah. With, um, something like that of that show. nature. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, um, you know, the episode where they showed that big um, cordyceps. I forgot what it's called, but like the really big one. The one that comes out and kills my bitch. Um, the girl who's trying. <laughs> yes, from. Um, um, from Yellow Jackets and yes. from Two and a Half Men. I yes. know what you're talking about. Yes. Mm-hmm. So the one that kills the guy, like ripping off the tape. <gasps> he was also in the video game yes. too. Yes. Mm-hmm. I think he plays the cult leader. 
individual oh. game. I think he's the cult leader. Sam Story cried. Oh my gosh. It's the I felt so bad for brothers. him. He kills his brother and then literally I felt helplessness for him and I would have probably done the same fucking thing. Yeah. Like you're living and you literally fought for your brother twice. Mm-hmm. Cancer. Now he's being bitten and shit. You accidentally do what you have to do and now this is your only way out. Such a good... It's, it's a small window but you feel so much like mm-hmm. emotion in it. Again, like I do wish they did a longer season or mm-hmm. did season one and two for the first game because like... In the video game, you do kind of stick with those two characters a longer. lot longer. Mm-hmm. And it does. Because, like, there's a part in the video game where Joel and the brother, the little brother, is Sam. The older brother's name is Henry. Henry. The younger brother's is Sam. Sam. So, yeah, like, in the video game, there's a part where Henry and Ellie are together. And they're, like, fending off something um, in the game. It focuses on Joel and Sam. And then they're together. There's, like, a little bonding moment there mm-hmm. as well. And it's just... I heard another change to the show from the game is Sam's deaf, and he wasn't really deaf in the game. That was yeah. something new in the show, and I liked how they actually used a deaf actor because mm-hmm. you know Hollywood loves to use a fake bitch and just put way too much work into mm-hmm. them than using the real thing. Yep. But I like that aspect, and um, when I watched the inside to the episode, they thought it was just a nice add on because it shows. Um, still a commonality. They're both still children, but they have a different way of talking to each other. Mm-hmm. But they're still, we're all human at the end of the day, especially in this time of atmosphere where we're just trying to fucking survive. And I do like they changed how uh, Sam was deaf and just seeing like how the two kids, Ellie and Sam, interacted with each other. Because like me working as a sign language interpreter, I see that every day at school. Like, you know, here's these kids that like, they come up to like the student I interpret for during recess or like, you know, during class. And then they just interact with each other. Like it's nothing like, whereas like adults, they're like, kind of like, uh, I don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. And then kids just naturally know like how to figure out a way to like interact with each other. Yeah. It's nice. It is nice. But yeah, Last of Us, y'all did it mm-hmm. good. I was just, I was engrossed. I was wigless when this dude just started shooting motherfuckers up left and right. But that cannibal bullshit, he just smacked the girl in her face. And then they were like, oh, what is this? Um, It's elk or something like that. <laughs> the bitch, that ain't no elk. It's your daddy, the one who got shot. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that's some good elk. <laughs> that mama was not playing the once he smacked the fuck out of the daughter. She was just like. Here's your food. (laughs) I knew he was a creep when he was like being too overly like um, nice to Ellie. Because in my head is like, okay, there's one or two ways he can be trying to do this. He can be trying to sway her to not shoot him. But he is going too in depth talking about how like alike they are and talking about too much going into the future how they eat, will help each other out when mm-hmm. they're sitting down and at this point she's already got her guard down and he's still trying to change her trying mm-hmm. to persuade her i was like this motherfucker got some nasty shit on to his shit and sure enough plays out ugh, when joel was interrogating the two people who went to go look for him mm-hmm. that was another good scene he was like show me you better not lie and then he shows him on the map Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm telling the truth. I believe you. Still shoots some motherfucker in his face. Goes to the friend. He was telling the truth. I know. It's exactly the same way in the video <laughs> game. <laughs> the savagery. I was just like, this is what they mean when they're afraid of fucking Joel. I was just shook. He you need to do, do what you need to do. Anything and everything to save Ali. And that's what, exactly what he did. Yeah. Kudos to you. And then again, don't step any closer those nurses know exactly I would be like oh shit bitch you can mm-hmm. take her let me unhook her for you I'm not dying for no fucking cause he was like I ain't playing around <laughs> he said call the police but not for me pew <laughs> <laughs> but yeah if that was like a real world situation and you know the world was like, The Last of Us, girl, I'm dying. 
I already said it. I will not survive in the apocalypse. I'm not running. I'm not looking over my fucking shoulder 15 times a day. You can kiss my fucking ass. I'm not starving for nobody. You got me bent. You think I'm going to kill a fucking deer? No, bitch. People are just like, oh, you oh, you say that now. But when you're in it, I wouldn't be in it. I'm unaliving myself. I'm not going to do this because I'm not going to let you bite me and turn me into your shit. That's something I'm not going to do. I'm not dying for a fucking cause. You can suck my ass. Fuck Kathleen. That's the girl who was the leader of the rebellion. Fuck her. I'm not dying for you. Fuck this Ellie girl. You want me to unhook her? Say less. I'm not here for the fireflies. You can suck my ass. I'll pretend to be so I can tag along and live my life. But when it comes down to it, I'm running. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this with you. Give me a gun, but I'm not going to use it to defend you. That, that wouldn't be me. I wouldn't be able to survive. I'm chucking the deuces and I'm unaloving myself and I'm calling it a day. This whole entire thing of the two guys living in the wilderness. No, not me. Yeah. Girl, on to the next. Let's get to the actual stuff. <laughs> but great show. <laughs> I can't wait for the season two, though. <gasps> it's no longer. It's a show that's no longer running, but I'm pretty sure it's on Netflix. It's the greatest fucking show in the world of Brit comedy, chewing gum by <gasps> Michaela. Michaela Cole. Yes. Oh my god. She's a great writer, actor. Did you see her in her other one? I may destroy you. Yes, girl. <sighs> I cried during that one. Yes. R.I.P. Chewing gum, though. Trace it. <laughs> Kana. <laughs> Kana. If you like <laughs> dry comedy, you need to watch that show. That show is so kind of relatable because it's just a girl like trying to navigate who she is as a person and truly like enjoy who she is and not try to change too much about her. So she's funny as fuck. Yeah. And she's a virgin. Oh, yeah. And then she's also um, She's her trying mom. really hard to lose her virginity. Yeah. And it's just not happening for her. Yeah. And then like her mom is like crazy religious. <laughs> and then her sister is like it's, also like. It's religious light. But yeah. she's even able to lose her virginity. So it's just like what the fuck? Yeah. It, the show is wild. And then there's one episode that it's like. <laughs> oh, okay. It's it's going there. Gotcha. If you don't like fetishes, this is not that's not the show for you mm-hmm. or the episode for you. But it's so funny. And then her "I May Destroy You." It's still comedy light, but it's very and it's kind of trigger warning. It talks about date rape, um, sexual assault, but it gives light in a different way of showing the aftermath of um, a survivor funny. and. It goes on both as the male survivor and the female survivor because his her friend Kwame, I think that's his name, yeah. excellently written. It goes into death on both traumas. So trigger warning, if you don't like sexual assault, don't watch that show. But still watch it because it gives you a good explanation on... Just be in a good headspace. Yeah. It's very informative. But yeah, when's the last time you've been on Craigslist? The last time? Yeah years like when facebook marketplace wasn't a thing okay and you know craigslist was like the place to like buy things okay and even then it was kind of like okay i'm done i bought my car on craigslist like back in the day my first car my toyota hi charlotte yes yes that's where i also got the red honda accent from so there's a segment in the communities tab for craigslist called miss connections And it's where people go and basically try to find the person that they misconnected with. Bitch, some of the shit that these people say is wild, funny. I have four for you. So it's a small little (laughs) misconnection. (laughs) Oh, my God. That better stay in the clip. Okay. This one is Jim Attraction Conway. See you at the gym often. It seems like there might be a mutual attraction. You came in the locker room after me this evening and rummaged through your gear while I was across from you getting ready to shower. Reply or say hi next time and let's see if we can find some mutual interests. Oh, that's a homosexual. <laughs> For facts. That is a homosexual. <laughs> if I've ever known. Mm. Capital H. Saw you playing soccer in Summerlin. 
would have been nice if you sat on my face afterwards. <laughs> oh my gosh. Is that a thing? That people like sweaty balls on their face? Well, it could have been a guy. It could have been a guy or girl. So sweaty yeah. genitals on their face. Um, there's some people into that. We'll leave that there. <laughs> Video fun. Anybody want to check out my CD collection? <laughs> my CD collection? Like porn? It just says CD collection. I thought albums. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's porn because it says like video fun or, yeah. I guess so. CD, but girl, what you got CDs for? It's called fan- OnlyFans. Uh, I mean, you got to pay for that. Oh, yeah, you're right. I mean, hubs free. There we go. Yeah. Come on, get in the new age. But I, I'm so like not about this dirty talk. I literally thought albums. Why you got CDs for, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> albums, a uh, girl. I'm gonna go in there. I'm gonna see Britney Spears. Oops, I did it again. Ooh, Ooh toxic. <laughs> Let's play that. <laughs> Last one. This one you know is missing my top man that used to feed me. <laughs> oh my god I'm looking for my top friend We used to meet and hang out I'm the younger white bottom And you were older And you always enjoyed feeding me If you see this and want to hang out again Let me know That is so vague <laughs> That is so vague Like it's a misconnection <laughs> And if this is like somebody that you like Was <laughs> hooking up with Like don't you have their number Don't you have a way to a, contact them A lot of the misconnections are some like that Um, They were like oh I used to hang out with you A couple of years ago Lost your number We used to be at this area at this time Hit me up if you see this And I'm just thinking in my head What the fuck Who I found this out by another podcast So not everyone knows about this misconnection shit So what the fuck just told you I'm gonna go on Craigslist right. I'm gonna do misconnection Right and like Craigslist is like not popular anymore After the killer fiasco Right I, No The very first one about the gym Like the gym locker rooms are like a hot spot for like bruising For facts I remember girl So I used to be a spa attendant at a local um, hotel and there was a man's side and a women's side. And in each of the spa areas, there was a sauna room. Mm. 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 If you know of the culture, sauna oh, rooms is... Mm. What is it called? The bathhouses? That's mm. their scene. That's the place to go. The mm. male attendant would oftentimes say he would walk in. Because you have because during that time, we walk in. To make sure it's clean, that there's no towels inside there. Make sure there's or nothing. Restock or yeah, um, put in some more water to spritz the rocks, whatever you want. I'm gonna fucking call it, you know. So oftentimes he would go in and midway, a guy stroking another guy, an- other guys helping him with his mouth. Uh, these men were out here doing it, and the wildest part, they don't know each other. Yeah, they're. Wives are in the other sauna. Yeah, a lot of DL men. Girl, and I'm just like, how do you read the room? Apparently, there's like signals. Is there? Yeah, there's signals. Oh my God. I yeah. heard that I've recently heard pineapples. Like, if you find a pineapple on someone's, like, in front of someone's house. Oh, that's for like swingers. Swingers, yeah. yeah. Or pineapples like, um, or gnomes. Oh, okay. Speaking about swingers, this is going left field. You went to a swinger party? Oh, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> but there's a movie, you're going to be shocked. Um, a movie based off of a kid's book, and there's a fishbowl, and. <gasps> Is it um um how the Grinch stole Christmas? Yes. Yeah, they're yes. having their party they're, and they're all going. They're in. all throwing their keys in there. Bitch. Yeah, that's like another like swingers thing. These people they just, just pick out keys and then they're like, "Oh, this is your key." Then you know you're yeah. coming with us or whatever. I've seen that. So, girl, when I seen that. Because, you know, that's a staple piece on Christmas. Every time mm-hmm. I see that, I'm like, these freaky motherfuckers, they put in another good gag over here for those us kids not knowing what the fuck is going on over right. here. And but the parents it. are like laughing. They're like, <laughs> it's either they put the keys in there or they take the man's watch and they put it in there. So whoever's mm-hmm. watch you get, that's the person you're going with at yeah. the end. Yeah. Like also going back to um, the signs, the signs, there are signals. I know this because, you know, it's gay culture. I don't want to say gay culture, but, like, it's very... Gays are like, very liberated in their sexual 
exploration. Exactly. So it is gay culture. I've heard oftentimes you fuck before you become friends. Yeah. That's gay culture. Yeah, for the most part, yeah. And it is what it is. No one's docking on you. At least I'm not docking on that. Because most times it's like, for me, when I was like single, it would be more like, okay, you're kind of cool. Let's hang out. Exactly. And then, you know, we have sex and it's like, oh, Mm -hmm. we had a good conversation. Let's have sex. Mm -hmm. We could do without. Yeah. And then just become friends after that. If both of us are single and we need someone to scratch something, I'll hit you up. I'm not gay or whatever, but I know of gay culture. I have a lot of gay friends. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, you fuck before you become friends. Yeah. That's just how it is. Yeah, for the most part. And then, um, but the whole like signals for like the cruising... That's what it's called, cruising. <laughs> um, like the, the this one, it's about like when you're in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. Guys would like go in the bathroom and then like go inside the stall, and then like sometimes you know they'll like sit down and then like let's say like there's another person in the stall. A signal that you could do is like move your foot like kind of close to them and like tap underneath <gasps> the stall so they can see it, and that's a signal. Or like, you know, you have your hand up, but like the shadow is like, un- it goes like underneath their stall in a way. And mm-hmm. then you do like the little movement of like, you know, <gasps> masturbation. When you were single, did you do those tactics? No. Have you ever been to a um, a bathhouse? No. No? No. Mm. I'm good. I always wanted to go to a sex club. Not to like participate, but just, yeah, just to like- watch. Oh, so this is what it's like. Okay. Yeah. Be there for like five minutes. Be like, oh, okay. Once it gets too serious, once I accidentally Somebody see some gonna, shit going on. start touching you and then you're going to be like, oh, no, no, no. Eric, we got to go. Watching. We got to go, Eric. We got to go. <laughs> but no, I always wanted to go. I told my friend this and she was just like, Natalia, you do not want to go to a sex house. I'm like, yes, I do. I want to see what's up. I am not free sexually i'm not gonna be putting myself out there so i find it intriguing and it's just like something cool to it's watch. more like just like a learning opportunity and like just that's a level of confidence me. i don't have and Excuse it's me. probably gonna come as i get older as a lot of people say like when you get older you just don't give a fuck mm-hmm. so it's just a level of confidence that some people have at a younger or early age or at my age that i just I admire i'm like yo yeah. that's that's Something admirable. Um, but so I always wanted to go and I was going to move to Vegas before the COVID pandemic happened. Thank and God she didn't. Yes, bitch. Because best Cause believe. She would have been back in a couple months, period. Pregnant. Ah! Well, thank God that didn't happen. Thank goodness. I don't know if this is a derogatory term or if it's supposed to be something that's offensive, but... I have a lot of gay friends and his ex-boyfriend I used to work with and I don't know what the conversation was, but he was like, you need to get um, more friends or more straight friends. And I was just like, why? Like, why is it a problem? He said that to me. (gasps) He was like, because you're acting like a fruit fly. And then I didn't know what that meant. And... Jonathan was laughing and he was just like, wow. And then I was just like, what the fuck is a fruit fly? And I look it up and it's just a woman who has a lot of gay friends because, you know, a fly that hangs a lot around fruit, aka they call gays fruity and things like that. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, I don't see that as offensive, but because of the person he is, he's a real shady motherfucker. He's a hater. So I asked Jonathan, I was like, was he trying to be shady? And he was like, yes. Because then he changed it from being a fruit fly to a fruit hag. Oh. Yeah. And I looked that motherfucker up. That's not okay. Exactly. So then I asked him, I'm like, why would you call me a fruit hag or a fruit fly? Like to me, I don't care. Me, I'm going to hang out with you if you're cool vibes, if you're awesome, regardless of what your sexual orientation is. I don't assume that you're gay. It just so happens a lot of my friends are gay. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. How is that an insult? I get it. Hag a little much. Bitch, I'm not ugly. You can kiss my fucking ass. I got bitches call me left and right, men and females. So it's like, I know I'm not ugly. I was like, how is that like a offensive? Okay. It's a straight, attractive woman hanging around a lot of gay guys or lesbians, whatever you want to call it. Fucking hating ass bitch. (laughs) But you know who the fuck you are, stupid. <laughs> but is that an is that seen as an insult, or does it just depend on who's saying it to you? I think it. I think it depends on like who's saying it to. You. I would never say that to like any of my friends. Personally, me, I would never call any of my friends 
that are like straight a fruit fly. I feel like that, you know what? Let's take it back. I don't think it depends on who's saying it. I think the word maybe is offensive. Okay. Or it's like throwing shade okay. at the individual. In Say what it. context? Why? It's kind of like hinting like, oh, like you can't pull like any like straight guys. Oh, so you're just like okay. hanging out with gay guys because like they're the only ones that hang out with you. Okay. So like that's like how I would interpret it. And I would never say that to my friends mm-hmm. who are girls and they are straight because it's like if you're like hanging out with gay people, like that means I'm we're comfortable around mm-hmm. you. Like you accept us for being us. I would never say that and you should never allow somebody to say that to you. Okay. Now I know. I was taking it as a compliment because I was just taking yeah, no, it for the- don't, don't take it as a compliment. Okay. Yeah. Fuck you, you stupid. Let me not say what I needed to say. <laughs> mm. Well, now I know. That's just fighting words. But on to the subject of love. I saw a cute thread that I was cackling for. The thread was, you know you're in love when fill in the blank. I'm thinking. Okay, but you understand the concept. Yeah. Like, me... You know when you're in love, when a love song hits different. Oh, yeah. Good song. So I got you with me, baby. And I know I'm in love when there's not a single word that can describe your bitch ass. Like, oh. he's so, he's not even cute. He's just, he gets me, you know? <laughs> that type of bullshit. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't describe you, fucking ass. But, you know, that's me. You know you're in love when you let them have your last lemon pepper chicken wing. Huh. <laughs> Sharing food is a, yeah. a sign of love because yeah. the fuck? Anytime I'm just like, <laughs> can I get a sip? He rolls his eyes. <sighs> Here. <laughs> or like, oh, that looks kind of good. But you said you weren't hungry. Can I have a french fry? I mean, you know you're in love when you didn't know he was ugly. <laughs> I mean, like. <laughs> I understand it. Because I mean, yeah, because when, when you're infatuated I, with somebody, like, when I like someone's personality, about, yeah, I you can be the ugliest person ever, and then like at the end of this relationship, I'm just like, you ain't even that cute, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like when they have like a really good personality, and when they're funny, it's like, oh yeah, you're yeah, you you cute, you're yes, you, you popping, okay. you're right, you know you're in love. When I keep rereading our text message over and over again. <laughs> oh, it sounds like, you know, they haven't gotten, gotten over mm-hmm. the relationship. They're, they're dissecting that, everything. Like, oh, like, this is a red flag. This is a red that flag. That person is still grieving the relationship. Mm. Probably got cheated on. Mm. Probably, it's not you, it's me breaking up bullshit. Probably got ghosted. Probably. Ugh. Maybe got ghosted. Like, relationship-wise? Yeah. No. I mean, like, hookup-wise, yeah. Well, that's but, like, normal. That's hookup culture. like. Mm-hmm. But, like, relationship-wise, you know, I still have, like, all my exes as, like, friends on, like, Facebook or whatever. We don't talk like that, except mm-hmm. for the one. Yeah. But other than that, like, ghosted, you know? I remember I was talking to this guy, and um, I had I was, like, just starting college or whatever, and he was taking too long to set up a second date. And I was like... I think I remember this. Yeah. I was like, you know what? You're not even about it. I don't know what the fuck I was on, in all honesty. And you were like, what? no, you are like quick to cut off oh, guys. Oh, for facts. Like, your number did not get saved. You were a random phone number. And sure enough, once I save your fucking number, you start acting mad out of pocket. Uh, no. And that's exactly what he did. I left him blank. All good and dandy. Finally gets a name. This motherfucker ass start making real stupid shit. So second day, I was like, oh, so when do you want to link up again? He was like, oh, I don't know. Whenever you do. No, 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 no. I need you to be assertive. And at this time when I was, what, 20, not even 20, 19, 18, I was just like, no, he's not about it. He's not serious. Serious about what, bitch? We're (laughs) just fucking out here living life. What the fuck was I expecting? I don't know. But best belief, cut off right there. Yeah, girl. I remember when you were on the dating apps, you were like, he hasn't responded in like 10 minutes. Unmatch. 
bye or, or quick <laughs> to cut them off after like five minutes like girl like it's like why give it like a couple days why or, are you like cutting him off he has no good conversation like he's just boring girl, he literally just said hi and hasn't responded yet <laughs> She like you're high. I was not fucking about it, bitch. I was so quick to cut a bitch off. I was like, you know what? Bye. Now I don't even try because I'm just like, I don't need it. Yeah, you got your dog. You got your house. You got a work from home job. There you go. That's all I you ain't need. doing shit. That's all yeah. you need. Exactly. You got your friends. I got a pod. Like, subscribe, listen. <laughs> You know you're in love when you start going through his IG likes and followers only to get your feelings hurt. <laughs> I Instagram knew what they were doing when they were getting rid of that little page that you can yes. see who likes who. Oh my god! <laughs> Why yes. you liking this bitch's pictures? Yep. Why you following this bitch back? Yep. <laughs> and now bitches got to go Sherlock Holmes in it. Who's this bitch? Uh, who, who's this? <laughs> This look like Rebecca. Why is she liking you for? Who the fuck is Rebecca? <laughs> <laughs> Did you say that on purpose? Yeah. Because, <laughs> I don't know, to me, that name just sounds like... It's a very common name. It is, but not for your situation. Yeah, not for me. Yeah, not for Interesting. Me. That's weird. And what and what did you mean by oh I got the same thing same thing of what that's suspicious okay Cardi B calm down I have the little gift right there I got you that's suspicious good thing they got rid of that girl they need to bring it back for a day bunch of relationships will go down in flames you know what speaking of which I remember exactly the day that that went away because my ex roommate she was like fuck and I'm like what's going on. They were like, they got rid of the page. I can't see who he's following or who he's liking. And I'm like, what do you mean? I never understood that. She was like, you could see who your followers follow and what photos they like. And I was like, oh, is that how you know he's always cheating on you? She was like, yes. And now I have to start brand new. So this bitch would literally open up his friends list. And every single time he saw, she saw a new person at the top, she would look into their thing. And she would see um, what he liked. Bitch was crazy. Mm. Good for her, though. Best of skills. You would think she should apply that to an actual career. Like, that one time you showed me that one person. <gasps> and then... So, when COVID was happening, like, the height, everyone was locked in their houses. No one can come out. I get a message on Instagram of this guy. He's like, oh, you're cute, sexy. I want you to be my sugar baby. And I go into those situations with the idea scam. of, like, this is a fucking scam. Leave me mm-hmm. the fuck alone. But I was just like, I'm bored. Let me entertain him. I do so. And he goes all talking like, oh, I'm in Dubai. I'm going to be back in the U.S. in a couple of days, which I find really hard to believe because they stop communications between the worlds and at this time. So he like something he's saying and didn't make no sense. So then I had Eric. I was like, Eric, I need you to look this guy up for me. Tell him your process, boo. First of all, yes. The story, the caption was like something about Dubai or whatever. And I was like... Hold up. That don't look like Dubai in the background. No. Like, Dubai is very bougie. That was given New York. And it was. And it was New York. This bitch finds on Google Maps that this photo was taken in, like, Bronx or Brooklyn, New York. Some bullshit like, like that. Like, to the T. Like, it was, like, the Google Street Map view. And I was like, oh, girl, he was standing right here when he took that picture. And there's the background right there. That ain't Dubai, sis. No. And then the little Rolex picture that he had. Oh, mm. that was like an advertisement shit on Google Images or some bullshit like yep. that. Google reverse image search. Yep. Catfish mm-hmm. teach you some shit, man. And yep. I was just like, and then what solidified that this was like some bullshit. He was like, oh, I'm going to need you to go get an American Express gift card and load it up. And that's how I'll give you your money. I was like, bitch, I'm not doing anything. Mm-hmm. The fuck are you talking about? It's like they think we're dumb. Exactly. Like, go get some of these pick me bitches out here like i got time for this bullshit but no that's his investigative skills and and then the other one a youtube person i found like her house in like tampa (gasps) oh my god yes so we saw this youtuber she was like 16 18 she was doing a tour of a house that she got for her boyfriend 
18 at the time. And she said she bought the house. She said she bought the house or whatever. But we were like, you how you you can't be getting all this money from YouTube doing what she did. And I think she, all she did was like sing songs or whatever. So we literally she said, oh, we're in the south of Florida. So there was an aerial view and we paused it there. And we just start looking. We start looking in the south of Florida and we start looking near the water canals because she was on the water and we're doing all this shit. He like taps me and starts laughing. And I'm like, what the fuck are you laughing for? Like he's doing his Joker laugh, like some crackling shit. Yeah. And he was like, bitch, I think I found him. I'm like, nah. Sure enough, this motherfucker found, found it based off of the roof style and a pool. Yeah, like they had a bird's eye view because like they had a drone and they did like the little outside view of the house, which is like, girl, you're putting like a lot of information out there. Me just like going on Google Maps and like figuring out like, okay, you live like near like this port looking area. You live by the ocean. And the, the other two houses didn't have a pool and your pool was shaped differently. Right. In the video, you say that you moved to like St. Petersburg or like Tampa, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. And she said, she pointed, she was like, Tampa's right over there. Right. So we were like, okay, so it has to be close in view eye of Tampa. Right. Tampa has to be Clear in the water. background. Just going to the houses. And I'm like, huh, let me look at the video footage again. <laughs> <laughs> he shows it to me bitch we find out the address we look on zillow because again we're committed this bitch did not have this much sure enough it says that the house is rented to this chick and i and we looked at it, i was like how much she paying her rent that was a lot way too fucking much bitch girl like he's invested he can investigate so Put your inquiries in the links down below. He'll be able Just to give me assist you. Maybe I can find some things out. But we digress. So, so the next one was like, you know, you're in love when I don't get an ick within six months. I know it's serious. I remember my ick came when I accidentally like opened my eyes when we were kissing and I saw his face. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> 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 I was like, I need to not talk to you. <laughs> and I literally. Girl, the amount of times that like I've done that, like just like open my eyes and it's just like. It's shocking. It's... And I'm pretty sure like I also have an ugly face when I'm kissing. Like, yeah, it's just your face is crunched up. And yeah, it's not attractive. It's not... Just don't open your eyes when you're kissing. <laughs> don't just ruin it. Don't. Don't. <laughs> Do it. Do, don't. Do not. I miss having a crush. Yeah. I miss... I remember the literally the last crush I had was probably the um, the Tinder guy that I cut off. That was the last crush I had. And that, mind you, was probably 2015, 2016. Yeah. I get that. Like, it's, again, it's that little, like, honeymoon phase of, like, just, like... Little butterflies in his stomach, like, mm -hmm. ooh. like, oh, he yeah. texted me, like, oh, you thought of me this morning, right? Not just that bullshit. Well, good morning, gorgeous, or mm -hmm. some bullshit. We're gonna finish this episode with the true off my chest. My sister didn't get into a single dream school, and I'm living for it. <gasps> That's mean, girl. You gonna hear? I me. don't know what the dynamic is. I kind of want to know the dynamic for like that sister or like sibling to be like. They give explanations. <gasps> Are you going to read it? Yes. Oh, okay. I'm going to leave you high and dry, bitch. Okay. I thought we were just going to end it right there. I'm like, mm, Rant Stranger Tea. Ooh, Stranger Tea. Okay. Love I'm gonna it. Meet, I need to get on that. Ooh, girl, you're, you're probably going to be real popular, like writing some fan fiction bullshit, but it's going to be your life. <laughs> I don't like my younger sister, Jessica. I will admit that she's always been daddy's girl and never faced a single consequence in her life. While my parents are not narcissistic or abusive, they've always been softer on Jessica than any of my other siblings. She's always been given privilege that were never given to any of our other siblings. It doesn't help that she's a selfish brat who's made it her mission to make all of, our, all of her siblings' life as hard as possible growing up. 
At some point, Jessica realized that she could just lie and get away with it or really do anything and not face any consequences. This ranged from petty lying to getting us all in trouble to actual crime. She used to steal any cash she could find from all of us. My parents defended her and brushed it off even after my older sister caught her on camera doing it. Jessica graduated from high school this year. My parents have been awfully quiet about her academics for the last two years, despite all of their other children having high marks academically. All now having college degrees, they could never stop gushing about Jessica and how smart she was until two years ago when she nearly failed high school by ditching for an entire semester. Her GPA now abysmal. She barely graduated from what I've heard, yet my parents and Jessica thought she could get into a good school. Jessica's dream school was Yale with Harvard as a second pick. I ain't joking. Despite her graduation quickly approaching, I heard nothing about Jessica's college plans. And it turns out that my parents and her have kept it a secret because she got accepted into zero of the schools she wanted to. It applied to 12. And she only got it accepted into one. The school she got accepted to literally accepts anyone with a pulse that can pay. That's what makes this more cathartic to me. (laughs) What makes me much pettier is when I and my other brother went to college, my father refused to use the money he was saving for us to go to college, claiming because we got scholarships we didn't need and he could save it for Jessica. I know for facts, Jessica is distraught by this. The point is moot anyways, because she would have failed or dropped out of school anyways. But for the first time in her life, she's actually facing consequences and I'm living for it. Wow. <laughs> so in other words, it sounds like the parents baby Jessica mm-hmm. and gave Jessica anything she wanted because she was the youngest. X. Uh, she got to get away with anything she wanted. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. This is your come up, it's bitch. Just because mm. mommy and daddy is out here trying to help you out and you feel like you don't got to do anything else doesn't translate into schooling. And bitch, how you going to ditch a whole entire fucking semester and think, and think your bitch ass is going to get into Yale or going to get into Harvard? You ain't fucking George Bush's kid. <laughs> George W. Bush had a C average. He was the president's son. He had connections. You ain't the president's daughter. Who the fuck you think you was? I'm going to, I skipped a whole entire semester. I'm going to get into Harvard. One of the most elite schools with the lowest acceptance rate. You're going to fucking get in. And look at you, going to Valencia College. Okay, don't rag on Valencia College. Valencia is good, but I'm just saying, Valencia accepted anybody. So it's just like, bitch, and, and then the parents, that's what you fucking get, you little pieces of shit. You put all your eggs into this little fuck ass basket and made me and my brother have to fend for our fucking selves. Us would go into like college dad, right? Petty or not, bitch. People deserve to come up. It's and hopefully they become better people. They're humiliated enough to the point where they're more humbled. But I don't think your sister's gonna do that because your parents are still not accepting the fact that they raised a monster. You still kept your eggs in this basket after she skipped a whole entire semester of school, and you think mm-hmm. she's gonna stick with college college ain't for everybody right it's not but it's just like and it shows in schooling if you don't do good in high school you most likely won't do good in college right because that's a continue education right and it's also like the parents like what was their like thought of like oh yeah we're gonna give all the money for college to jessica even though she like missed an entire semester she must have been like um a miracle child a what A miracle child, because you know how certain Um, people might have, like, they might want another child and might have trouble conceiving them, and then they finally conceive, and then they're just like, oh my gosh, she's a miracle baby. She's probably some point of that, because it's not like this is their only kid. Right. They had other kids before him, but there was probably, like, a difficult pregnancy or whatever, and they were like, oh my god, she's safe. She's she's meant. Or maybe Jessica just knew how to... Finesse that shit Finesse. And they did say She's daddy's little girl She's the youngest daughter Right So, so That makes sense Yeah <sighs> Well That brings the end To This episode oh. Thanks Time for just like Flies by on this It does It does when you have Good fucking conversations Bitch Yeah Well 
Hopefully I'm on here again. Hopefully. Well, again, don't forget, like, subscribe on YouTube and the audio listeners anywhere you get your podcasts. Bye. Bye. Dos vidania. That's, oh, yeah. Our little saying. Yeah. Dos vidania.